morning, Lamaris. Hi, teacher. Good morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Do you want to look at your e-portfolio? Yes, teacher. All right, so let's take a look here. And I think I see what you mean. You, the template, it looks like, have all of the products in one page, right? Um, and that's okay, all right? If, if the template is set up to to do this, and this is what you want, right? If this is what you, you're after, um, that's fine. They, there should be other templates, though. The, the thing that, that, you know, when I, when I look around here, like your main page starts off with your name and your picture at the front, okay? And then when I click on something here, I don't see a way, like here, there's nothing to take me back to the top. I have to scroll back. If I go to contact, I have to scroll all the way back unless I click up here. Now, I just clicked up here by accident and it takes me back. But notice there's nothing up here that note that indicates that it takes you back to the top of the page. And so I don't mind this template if you like this template, but make sure that it's easy to navigate, that it's clear. Like if you can put maybe your name up here or even an image, your your picture, a small thumbnail, so that it, you know, because again, I don't see anything up here at all to indicate, you know, usually that's what web pages do. And that's why I just clicked by accident really up there to see. And um, so that would be my suggestion. Like, I'm not opposed to using this template if that's what you want, but it should be fairly easy to navigate back and forth. Like right there, see, I don't know what happened there. And you know what I mean? Yes, teacher. Okay, um, so, so yeah, just I, think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, teacher. Actually, yesterday I made some changes in the um, in my Wix site, but now I'm noticing that the changes were not saved. I don't know why, teacher. And there should be there should be a publication. Sometimes, like you'll make changes, and this is by design. You make changes, and then when you're ready to to publish, there should be another button or another step that says, okay, I'm going to publish now my changes so that everybody can see my changes. So maybe you need to go back to the dashboard and just select the option to, to basically save the images or publish those changes so that everyone else can see them. If, okay. you, if you want to share your screen, we can look at it if you have it on a computer right now that we can look at. Yes, teacher, I'm going, I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, okay, but hi, teacher. Hello. <laughs> Camera. Okay. There, there I have it, teacher. But now, uh, for example, here it is my website. When I, when I open it normally, but when I try to edit again, I can tell the changes that I made yesterday. I don't know why, because I click here that it says save. Mm -hmm. But I don't uh, know. Demaris, do you know how to share your screen in Microsoft Teams? Mm, I know, teacher. Okay, I don't know if you have an option. Let me see if I can share my screen again. If you yeah. take a look at my screen, do you see this little box that I'm circling on my screen? Um, no, teacher. I, I don't see. See, teacher, I can. No, you can. You don't see it. Um, I'm going to open Teams, teacher, in my computer. Okay. 
So I can. So if you can see my screen, let's see. Yes, I can see it, teacher. Oh, you can see it. Right. Do you see? Teacher, I'm sorry. It? I think that is, I'm seeing my screen because I'm like, yeah, what I can see is my screen in your, I don't know how to, I see your, your, su camera is small and is, is you. Okay. All right. Uh, can you open up your, can you go in? Can you go into the, oh, but you're on your phone, right? Are you on your phone accessing this? Yes, teacher. Ah, okay. But now I'm in Can my you, computer. Why don't you, okay. why don't you, why don't you uh, close, close it on your phone? Can you access it on your computer? Yes, teacher. I'm going to close the, the computer. And I'm going to be my computer. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. So are you on your computer right now? Yep. Okay. Now there should be an option. Do you see where your microphone icon is? Yes, teacher. All right. Do you have an option right uh, to the right of the of the mic? It has a little screen with the arrow. Yes, teacher. Okay, if you click on that, Demaris, this will share your screen on your computer and I can see your screen. So okay. you want to try that? Let's try that. Yes, teacher. Um, I think that I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, let's wait a second. Sometimes it takes a second. Okay, teacher. It says now you have to click on there's two steps. You click on the little icon, the square with the arrow, and then yes. you have to select at the bottom of your screen, your screen. It'll have like a, a screen at the bottom. You have to click on that. OK. And now I did that and now it says compartir tu, toda la pantalla, ventana de la aplicación o pestaña de Chrome. Uh, como quieres, puede ser uh, uh, por todo, puede ser nada más una ventanilla, como tú quieres. Okay, but you know, teacher, um, any of these options, uh, let me share my screen because the button, the bottom, uh, no, el botón that sí. says compartir is not available, it's like all gray. Oh, and did you select though? Did you select one of the options? Uh, yes, I select the, um, the the option that shares all the screen. Okay, I'm going to my control. Ah, yeah, voy a poner, yeah, teacher, creo que ya voy a poder. Okay. Yes, teacher? Yeah. Okay, now I see your screen. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to editar sitio. You can see that? Yes, I can. Okay. It's opening. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay, there, teacher. Okay. Here I have, for example, here I made, um, I don't know how to change the template. Okay, si, si entras en sitio hasta arriba, mm -hmm. 
Vamos a ver, aquí guardar. Ok, donde dice publicar. Si selecciones este. Ok. Publicar. Ahora, ahora sí. Okay. Vamos a ver, yo lo voy a ver tu sitio. Ok. Ok, now I see some changes. Ok, so este, that's one of your questions. Ok, so hay que publicarlo. Para, ah, okay. para guardar los cambios, no estás publicando nada hasta que tú pones así publicar. Es decir, pues, ese es por... Eh, esa es la intención, para que uno puede hacer los cambios hasta que ya dicen, ok, ya está perfecto, ya voy a publicarlo. No va a publicar así como cada cambio lo que estás haciendo. Mm, ok. No como das dos pasos. Ok. Ok, teacher, thank right, you. So, uh, now, the templates, I mean, if you want to change the template, Vamos a ver, avance, sí, herramientas, uh -huh. dice. herramientas, barra de herramientas, uh, okay. barra avanzado, de... avanzado, ok, no, okay. opciones, no, ok, vamos otra vez nuevamente en sitio, no. Tal vez sea pro teacher aquí here and this. Ah, aquí, sí. ¿verdad? Bueno, fondo es como el color de atrás. Oh, ok. Imágenes, pero igual, si sí, vamos a ver, el plus no creo. Yo pienso que son herramientas trabajando dentro del de sitio, pero igual vamos a ver cada icono al lado de izquierda. A ver qué más. Okay. Okay, menú menú bueno, del sitio, no. fondos. No. Eso es para Aquí agregar más. elementos. Sí. Aquí está agregar pues videos y cosas así. Y abajo. No. Abajo. Multimedia. No. Um, oh. Hay una flecha arriba. Ajá. Una flecha abajo. Hasta como al lado del icono de tu compu. Hasta ahorita, hasta arriba. Donde dice página de tab. Ah, sí. Hay una flecha uh -huh. abajo. ¿Qué dice? Dice, my educational philosophy, my written words, and, and that's all. O en tu cuenta, si entras en tu... Ah, ok. Otra cosa. Si para publicar también es más fácil el, en la esquina hasta arriba, a la derecha. Uh -huh. También creo que dice publicación, ¿no? O publicar. Hasta arriba a la derecha. Hasta en la esquina. Pues sí, sí, ya vi, teacher, aquí. Ah, ok. Sí, eh, eh, acaba de decir eso. Sí, ya, este, este es para ya publicar y otro es guardar. Ok. Um, tu cuenta, no hay una manera de entrar en tu, en tu cuenta. Sí, teacher. Um, Como tu cuenta de, de Wix, para ver si hay más opciones. Sí, teacher. Uh, voy, a, voy a compartir esa pestaña que lo... Puede compartir la, la pantalla solamente compartiendo las pestañas, teacher. Ok. Ahorita voy a volver a compartir. Pestañas de Chrome. Y panel de control. Aquí está mi, mi sitio, bueno, desde, okay. desde el panel de control, teacher. Ok, a ver. Uh, 
Acciones, de, abajo de tu nombre, uh -huh. dice acciones. Sí. De no, de pecar, de ser invitar, de decir no. Sí, tiene que ser de una manera. Escogiste este formato, este ejemplo, ¿no? Supongo, ¿no? Este formato. Así es, así es, teacher. Cuando lo hice en Prope, este, elegí ese, ese formato para, para la... Para mi portfolio. Ok. El, el lado izquierda, abajo de donde dice upgrade, dice editar sitio. Sí. Creo que va a regresar donde estábamos, pero igual, si quieres dar un clic. Ok. Ah, a ver. Sí, teacher, no regresa. Ah, wait. Espérame. Donde dice, vamos a configurar tu sitio, ahí medio. Uh -huh. ¿Qué, ¿Qué dicen abajo? No, 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 no se ve. Dice, sí. porque dice 2 a 4 completado. Sí, dice, publicar tu sitio. No. Conectar un dominio. No. Mejora tu posición en Google. Uh -huh. Y luego dice que optimiza tu negocio. Agregar. No, más abajo. La estación de agregar contactos, crear no más abajo, por favor, agregar no hmm. tiene que ser de alguna manera cambiar el, como el diseño. Estoy buscando como una opción a, a, a cambiar el diseño de tu sitio. Sí, Realmente vienen con varios como formatos que respeten así como el contenido lo que tienes, pero nada más cambia el diseño. Es lo que estoy buscando. Uh -huh. Igual, pues preguntamos a tus compañeros, como la mayoría sí. están utilizando Wix, a ver qué, si alguien... Sí, sí. Y, y tu nombre en el lado, al lado a la derecha hasta, hasta arriba. Si das un ¿Sí? clic ahí abajo, ¿qué opciones tienes? Dice, opciones de cuenta. Vamos a ver este. ¿Cuál, teacher? Perdón. Opciones de cuenta. Este. Okay, bueno, es básico. Creo que aquí es nada más pues, de mi perfil que tengo en Wix. Y bueno, de los dominios, casillas de correo. Suscripciones premium, historial de facturación, cupones. Pues. Que... Ay. Entonces, ¿este sitio es de cuando pues, lo que tenías antes? Así es, teacher. Pues otra manera es crear un otra, si, si quieres, deje así. Y mientras pues, entras en otro sitio o otra, este, pues, otro servicio como Weebly o algo que para mí, la verdad, yo pienso es más, más fácil. Para mí, Wix sí. es lo más complicado. Como oh, Weebly es más sencillo y Google Sites todavía más, más, este, todavía es más sencillo en términos de navegar y, y pon, subir con... Es más amigable. Entonces, no sé si quieres considerar, ¿verdad? Este, otra, otro servicio, ¿verdad? Yo creo que sí, teacher, porque, porque sí estoy teniendo problemas para, pues, para empezar con el menú de navegación. Porque yo quiero añadir más anclas. Por ejemplo, eso que dice usted, de que lleve a mi, al inicio pero no puedo, no, la verdad es que de seguro debe de haber una manera, pero no sé cómo. Mire, voy a compartir, estoy compartiendo mi pantalla, voy a entrar a mi cuenta de Weebly, nada más para demostrar rápido cómo se ve. Gracias. Pues ya sí, entras sí. con tu clave. Ajá. Vas a entrar en una pantalla así y entras aquí donde dice Edit Website. Eso es más como estadística de, del sitio. La verdad que casi no lo uso mucho este, pero 
pero es muy fácil a, a subir información. Uh -huh. Vienen en, como en dos, dos tipos. Tienes páginas, donde dice aquí páginas. Ajá. Y desde aquí puedes con este formato, este, click and drag, mover así muy fácilmente todas las páginas. Estas páginas aquí a la, a, a la izquierda son las páginas que aparecen en mi menu, en mi navigation. Es lo Ajá. que estás diciendo. Es muy fácil de cambiar. Si yo quiero broadcast antes de ITC, mira, nada más ponen así y ya. Ya está. Ok. Es muy fácil. Ya, ya, mueve, ya puse ahí abajo de ICT, pero no, no quiero. Quiero así como igual. Entonces, sí, estoy moviendo así rápido y todo eso. Y build, build son las herramientas, como en Wix, las opciones que tenías al lado de la izquierda, sí. esos son, esa es la misma idea, pero aquí es nada más click y drag. Esta pantalla en medio es como se ve, todavía no está publicado hasta que yo puse publish, ¿verdad? Okay. Entonces yo puedo hacer los cambios y ya con el término, pues ya puedo publicar al público. Pero aquí es muy fácil, nada más click and drag. Ahí yo puedo poner donde yo quiero ponerlo, ¿sí? Si yo quiero este aquí. Ya, yeah, ahora sí. En el texto, etc. ¿no? Es, es muy, muy fácil. Si quiero quitarlo. Nada más con este. Y eliminarlo. Entonces, Wix y para mí Wix, perdón, Weebly y este Microsoft or Google Sites, estos dos sitios son muy, muy fácil y muy amigable para crear, subir contenido para, para como un tipo de portfolio. ¿Sí? Sí, teacher. Ok, entonces yo creo que sí voy a, pues voy a, voy a hacerlo de nuevo para este semestre porque... Y, y, y subir la, el contenido y otros trabajos, lo que tenías, y bueno, es, es también, pero es opcional, obviamente, para esta clase, pero igual puedes este, mover lo que tenías para tener un poco más contenido en tu portfolio, uh -huh. algo que puedes agregar después en otras clases. Sí. Ok, teacher, muy bien, voy a, sí, voy a tomarlo en cuenta y sí, creo que sí, sí lo voy a cambiar a Weebly. Es que la verdad, teacher, sí, bueno, eso no es, no es algo, ¿verdad?, de la clase, pero sí se me, me dio mala con la tecnología. Entonces, como todos lo hicieron en propio con Wix, yo dije, no, pues que me enseñen con Wix. Ajá. Y uh, por eso lo hice con Wix, pero ahorita pues voy a hacerlo de Weebly, si usted me comenta que es ahí mejor, pero más, o sea, un poquito más sencillo que, que en Wix. Sí, Entonces, para que no complique tanto las cosas y y, y la verdad, para mí, yo no me, me gusta mucho Wix. Siempre los alumnos, cuando yo presento todas las tecnologías, bueno, no, pero, pero algunas tecnologías, este, no, se, me sorprendo que, que tantos alumnos están escogiendo Wix, porque sí. sí, Wix está padre, puedes hacer muchas cosas, pero sí está un poco más complicado. Y para mí, pues los detalles, que es algo que que es muy fácil, muy rápido, que puede subir información para que no tiene, este, tiene muchos problemas este, para, para publicar lo que están haciendo, ¿verdad? Sí, teacher. Ok. Sí, tiene razón. Yeah. Teacher, bueno, pues me dices, Tamari, si este, igual en este, en, durante la sesión de hoy en vivo o después, pues me dices si tienes algunas este, preguntas. ¿no? Perfecto. Claro que sí. Muchas gracias, teacher. De nada. Gracias. Nada. Good morning, Vanessa. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, Vanessa, feel free to jump in. We started a little early this morning, um, but if you have any questions, uh, just unmute your microphone. And otherwise, we'll get started here in just, just a few minutes.
Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Good morning. Good morning, Elizabeth. Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Today, guys, what I'd like to do, a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so I can also show you in Microsoft Teams uh, some information that I posted. Today, I want to take uh, time to look and give you guys feedback. Those of you who uploaded links to the Excel spreadsheet, give you some things to look at and to consider. But basically, let me go to the post. All right, this post right here, I included a list, it's rather long, but this is what I'm looking for. As I was looking through the portfolios this morning, these are some things that came to mind. So take a look at this list. These are things, again, that most of these we've been talking about um, over the course of this week, having good contrast, making sure that everything's very easy to read, it's easy to navigate that you have a good menu system and it's easy to find information. The, the key to having a good e-portfolio is that it looks professional. And what, is, what does it mean to look professional? It's easy to read. It's easy to find things, right? So you don't get lost in the, in the website, right? It's easy to come back to the home page, right? And all of these are very explicit in the menu system that you have. And most of the menu systems are part of the templates that you guys can choose from. In most of the services, you have choices of different themes or different designs, and you can choose. You have some flexibility. All right, so uh, let's jump right into looking at the e-portfolios. Um, let me open up here. Teacher, sure. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so um, I put the purpose statement in the about me section because I felt like it was something that was about me. So I thought it was going to be weird to leave it um, with the rest of the assignments. Okay, that's fine. If you if you have a, a reason for putting it in a different place, that's fine. The main thing is that that uh, I and anyone else can easily find the content. So I'm not looking for, you know, I'm giving some suggestions. For example, the educational philosophy. If you guys want to include it in the home page, the main page, or if you want to include it in the about me page, of course, you can choose where you want to put it. So. The main thing is that I can find it very easily, uh, all of the content, all the products that we did for the semester. But yeah, that's fine if you want to include it in your About Me page. Okay, thank you. Also, um, what, which one is the cover letter? Uh, the cover letter was what we used for uh, accompanying the um, the, the online the online resume. So whenever you guys send out an online resume, you usually have a letter that uh, that accompanies the online resume. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so I'm just going to start from left to right. I think I have most of, I think I have all of them, in fact. I should have all of you who have uploaded to the, the Excel spreadsheet. I think I have it up here. Um, I've already looked at the Demaris's and we talked about it earlier. So um, Demaris is going to be working on, on hers. Uh, Vanessa, let's look at Vanessa's here. So she's got her picture here in the front page and then her educational philosophy, which is fine. Now, in your uh, Vanessa, in your navigational menu, uh, because you have your educational philosophy here, perhaps you don't need a, in your menu, and maybe you're still working on this, but um, probably it's not necessary to have it in the navigational menu. Uh, oh, I see. This is very similar, I think. To no, it's different. Okay, I, I was just I'm just kind of looking around, like what happens when I click on this. 
and it's basically the same page. So again, I think if I think that it's not necessary to have it in the nav navigational menu since it's on your home page and you can scroll down just a little bit and you can see see it. But you might decide, uh, Vanessa, to also include an About Me page. And in the About Me page, you might also decide to have the educational philosophy there instead. Um, but that's, that's up to you. Now, the, the, what I would suggest in your navigational menu is to create some categories here along the top where uh, that are a little bit more specific to what it is that you want to share instead of having maybe one menu with a lot of different products. Now, I understand that you're probably still working on this. Uh, this looks like uh, some products that you did in Prope. So um, I'm going to assume you're still working on this, but I think that I would have more menus along the top. And um, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions about how you plan on designing uh, your, your e-portfolio, okay? I'm going to go on. You guys jump in. I'm just going to move one to the next. If you guys have questions or want me to stop, and just Teacher, jump in. I have a question. Yes. I I just I don't get it. The part did you say about the the cover letter? Yes, teacher. Same. We didn't do that. Oh yeah. Me neither. Because yes, I don't remember. Did we, did we okay so the cover letter or was the educational philosophy the maybe the educational philosophy was um yes well, okay for let's yeah don't worry about the cover letter then. forget about the cover letter just do the um the educational philosophy will will be enough okay so don't worry about the cover letter okay okay thank you all right uh, so I, who's this? Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. This is Ali's, right, Ali? Yes, teacher. All right. So here's here's the thing I really like. There's a lot of aspects I like about how this how you're navigating through all of the content. Um, okay, so you have to hit the home. Okay, got it, got it, got it. All right, so we go to writing workshop. Go to persuasive essay. All right, so this is good. All right, so this is what some of your um, e-portfolios guys and some of the examples I saw I would get to a product and sometimes it was it was hard to get back to the home page so in this case you can either click on this icon or this to take you back and this is what I mean by navigation so you can kind of it's good navigation to go and find different pieces of information right um, I like the formats the spacing right all of this I think matters after regards, though, I think I would put a comma instead of a, a colon there. All right. But this is um, good. Just make sure that your text, make sure that you're consistent with the text and the titles. Um, if you compare, let's look at this example. If you can try to remove some of this white space and move references up closer to the last paragraph, I would try to do that. Um, let's compare again the persuasive. So notice that in this case you have more space between the paragraphs and and notice that here you don't have space. So personally I I think there's nothing wrong with having this space like you have it here but be uh, consistent throughout. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. If if you yeah. if you want to not have any space, I mean this doesn't look bad like it is. That's fine, but just be consistent with how uh, how you are formatting this. And even with here, you have less space, which is I think better. Uh, you mm -hmm. can this up closer, I think. 
All right. Okay, but I would double check both both essays to try to be uh, consistent with. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher. And let's see what else we got our poems. Now in your poems, guys, when you guys are creating your poems, I would suggest that you include a single page for each of your For poems. each poem? Okay, all right. I, I would try to do that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because that way then you can also include an image. Try to okay. have a visual, it can be a, a, a picture, it could be a clip art, some sort of image that represents the overall message of your poem, I think would be a nice addition. I'm, I'm suggesting also, this is optional though, it's not required, but if you record yourself and upload an audio, I think that would be very good too, right? Because now you're demonstrating your, your skills of, of speaking along with just the skill of writing. But that's optional, audio is optional, but I would ask that you include uh, an image and just be careful with the spacing here. Notice how this K kind of, yeah. whatever, Jumps to the next line there, so. but yeah, I like uh, I like the uh, your e-portfolio, Ale. It's easy to navigate, and I don't know what that does. Oh, is that for a contact? Okay, that's for the link of LinkedIn. Oh, it is. Uh huh. But now I I get it that I have to um, put it in the about page. So I will change that. Yeah, I. Let me see here. Just checking the link here because. It I shouldn't have to sign in. I shouldn't have to sign in. Um, if you guys ever are curious about my pet peeves, it's that little check thing there. I hate that thing. <laughs> there we go. So here we go. All right. So I guess I have to sign in. Um, let me see. I don't know how, what your guys is, uh, this is how I access my profile. And my profile link looks like this. All right, it's rel it's relatively short, and it looks like this. And I just noticed yours looks a little bit different, and I don't know if that's the thing. Is I don't think I should have to sign in. Let me see if I sign out. Let me try something. I'm curious if we have to sign in to see someone's portfolio. That's my question. And I don't, I'm going to try my own here. I'm going to sign out. Yeah, see, so this, make sure you guys are using the, it's like a public link. So, Someone should not have to have an account with LinkedIn to be able to see your LinkedIn account profile. And, and this is a good example. This is my LinkedIn profile link. I'm not signed in and I'm able to see it. And this is the link that I would like for you guys to share in the Excel spreadsheet and also in your ePortfolio. So again, I'm gonna sign in. I'll show you where to find that. You guys click under your where it says me. You should have a link here that says view profile. If you click on view, uh, view profile, this should take you to your profile link that you can uh, use. Okay, so I would use this link. All right, teacher. And also, when you guys are including your links to your LinkedIn profile or your online resume, have make it very clear whether it's through text or it might even be an image of LinkedIn. You can maybe find an icon uh, of, of LinkedIn, but it should be very obvious what it is you're clicking so that someone is not like thinking, OK, well, what, what does this do? Or what does this take me? Uh, so you want to make it very clear, either through text or an image, what 
what the person's clicking on. Okay, teacher. Yeah, everything else looks good. I like, uh, I like the formatting here, the spacing. And uh, have you included all of the products? Or are you still working on some? Looks like. Looks like you have most of them here. You can decide if you want to write this out as poems or maybe have if you have an option to create a sub page or you list out the individual poems in this one space. OK, very good. All right, teacher, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. OK, Omar, I think we looked at yours uh, yesterday. Just a couple of suggestions. Try to be consistent. Make sure you ca you capitalize the main words of your heading. But notice the different size fonts when you compare your persuasive essay with your argumentative essay. It looks like this is a different font size here than what you have in your persuasive essay. I think the text here looks the same, but it looks like they're not the same size. No, yeah, maybe it looks like in the other one needs to be here because there's like two lines, but it, it's the same, the same size of the letter. Okay. All right, just maybe. maybe that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I will cut it. Okay, yeah, just double check. Right. If that's the same, that's fine. I would also try to maintain equal spacing between these two. Notice you have like four words here and you have a lot more words up here. So just try to even out the two lines of your title. Mm-hmm. Now, this title looks different to me than, than this. Mm. What do you think? Like where you have business correspondence. Now, I don't know if you need this title, business correspondence. Uh, well, that's fine if you want to keep this. This is the main page, and then this is the purpose. Mm -hmm. that yes, I, I could yeah. because I couldn't find a way to leave that. Do you remember that it was just yeah. in white? So I put that to make it not being just like alone, empty, and for like to be an introduction of the unit. But um, because I couldn't find a way that it just send you to yeah, they recommend each other. That's fine. But if you can keep yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Um Teacher, I only have a question. Yes. Uh, the purpose statements are the list that we wrote about the expectations and the purposes. Uh huh. Yes. Oh, all right. Because I was I was kind of confused on that part, but now it's clear. Thank you. Okay. All right. You're welcome. And it's it's um, if you guys are going to include your expectations and commitments. That's fine. I would suggest, though, that you include your purpose statement at the top, and then you have mm, your expectations okay. and commitments at the bottom. Uh, but okay. if you want to just include the purpose statement, that's fine also. Okay. Uh, all right, so we got Lost Boy. Now, here, if you notice the title, Omar, here, it looks like Lost Boy, this title, is smaller than the uh, uh, so I would mm -hmm. just be consistent mm -hmm. with the size of the fonts there. But I like your use of images here. Everything else looks looks good. You've got your link that's good to the image, and everything else looks looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. We'll check the the titles. All right. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, I think we looked at yours as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think you're okay. Uh, Elizabeth looks good. What I, I like about yours, Elizabeth, is your name at the top is consistent. So like I always know who this whose work this is, right? And I think this has a big effect when somebody's looking and they're trying they're looking at what you're producing, that your your name is constant, right? So we never forget what well, who are we looking at here? Right. So I like that in this Tim and I you chose a, a really good template with a lot of good images. And um yeah, and you've got your about me. You said you wanted your purpose statement. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Miguel, I like your design here. All right, so the same thing. I like how your name appears. It's, it remains constant, so you chose a good template here. That's your educational philosophy. Same way, I think if you want to move, if there's a way to move the references up just a little bit more, I think you can do that. Make sure that you um, put in bold your references. I think you did it in the first essay. I would do the same in the third unit, in the argumentative essay. So yeah, you you put it in bold there. So double check that. Mm -hmm. Very good. Unit four. Yeah, I. My suggestion would be to create a separate page so that you can also include images, like to really have a, a dedicated space for each of the poems so that you can put more information into each of the poems, not only the text, not only the title, but an image and hopefully even a, an audio, right? Even an audio of uh, your poems. You guys did poetry readings and really a poem is meant to be read. And since this is to demonstrate your English proficiency, both in terms of writing, I know this is just a writing class, but it's really set out to read and bring to life your poems. And that's why we did the poetry reading so that you become more comfortable with reading and hearing your own work that you that you wrote out. So uh, if you have a dedicated page for each of your poems, then you have a little bit more space to work with. and. Again, you don't want to cramp too much information into one space, one page online. So uh, my suggestion would be to try to separate your poems, having a dedicated page or space for each each of your uh, each of your poems. What do we got here under more? Okay, that's fine. Maybe this is from prior semesters. And what else? I'm kind of on the fence here. I mean, I, as I'm looking at your essays, whether or not persuasive essays should be this size and this should in in your title. I'm almost I don't I think it's fine to have the title persuasive essay at the very top, but I think I would rather you put persuasive essay in smaller text and have the title of your essay in larger text. Okay, that's just my personal personal view on that. So that because for me it's a little bit more important the the title of your of your essay. But everything else looks good. You have good contrast. You have an image of yourself, name at the top. Um, now I noticed you're you're including some contact information at the bottom, uh, Miguel. Just make sure you're comfortable with sharing this with the whole world. Personally, my opinion, I would not share my email or my phone number uh, on in a in a public place. Okay, so uh, this also goes for 
your uh, personal correspondence, your, your business correspondence guys, if you are writing letters to, to an organization that really exists, make sure that you're not including any personal information. You can put false information if you want, like you're a different phone number, right? That's not your real phone number. Um, if it's someone else, you can make up a number. If it's, but if it's a public place, like if it's a school and they have a published phone number, right, online or, you know, that, that someone can access, then of course it's okay to use it because it's already public information. But if it's information that's not published someplace online or, you know, in a public domain, then I would not share it. I would not include that information in the business correspondence and the letters that we wrote. Uh, and I wouldn't include it in your own personal information. All right. So that's what I would have to say there, Mike. Uh, you've got a good uh, good e-portfolio there. Eileen. Oh, I'll work on that. Okay. Uh, Eileen, I like right away. This is what I like your the image, your name, and hello. I like all of this very close together with your LinkedIn profile. Okay, so for me that has a really big effect right from the very beginning. Your home page, uh, you get a really it personalizes very nicely the e-portfolio. Uh, the one thing that I don't know if you're able to change is notice that there's not great contrast in English language teacher. You your name appears fine, but I almost lose this text here. So if there's a way to maybe change this to a brighter color to offer a better contrast between the purple background and the text, then I would change that. Very very much like how you have your navigational menu down here for unit ones, one through four. All right, so my educational philosophy uh, maybe you could go a little smaller. I, I don't know if you want to try to fit this on a single line. Um, that's just an observation there about the size. It looks a little on the large side. Okay, that looks good. Your essay. Mm -hmm. I like that. So let's compare it with the argumentative essay. Okay, so you have a different color, but let's see. All right, so for me personally, and a lot of this is just personal preference, but again, this is how I see it. I like this. For me, this looks professional. You have persuasive essay with a little line and then the title. I like this. If you like this also, then I would do the same thing for your unit three. Even if you have a different color, I think that's okay. But if you can be consistent with the fonts, be consistent with the font sizes, the layout, like with a little line here, and then you've got the title, then I would do that. I would also try to include more uh, equal spacing between both of these lines so that maybe you add a few more lines to the second line of your title. And personally, I like this spacing you have that you have here and I would I would do the same here notice you have a little bit more space here All right, just to be consistent with the formatting between these two essays okay business correspondence now here you have, it looks like these two business correspondence and purpose statement are really close to the same size when probably I would make purpose statement a little bit smaller. Like this would be kind of a subheading to business correspondence. Now you've chosen to include all of this in one page. I would recommend if you can to, I don't know if you can create sub pages if in the template that you've chosen here, if it gives you an option to, let's say, like when I hover over, or if I click on unit two, it drops down a menu 
and you can have one page for the purpose statement, one page for the recommendation letter, and so on. Uh, I think I would try to do that instead of including all of these into one page. But the format looks good. I like the, the use of the title for each one of these. But I would be consistent again. So notice how purpose statement here is a little bit larger than recommendation letter. And you have recommendation letter italicized. So again, I would just be consistent. Be consistent with the titles. And again, I would suggest that you try to have a separate page. And does this take, let's take, see your LinkedIn account. All right, I'm clicking on this button here and it doesn't do anything. So I don't know if you if there's a way that you can instead include the link in that button so that when someone clicks on the button, it takes you there. So it's going to be the same thing I suggested uh, earlier that uh, try to choose the public profile link to your LinkedIn profile. All right, there's a, a public link that that uh, that you need to use so that anyone can access your your uh, profile. Yeah, and unit uh, for each of the poems. Yeah, it looks good. I like how you have the images. Um, Again, I, I would try to include it on a separate page if you can. Um, check your spacing here. Looks like one of your the spacings are off in your Tonka. And try to use the same font. It looks like this font is different than this font. Right? And like this heading, the title of this sonnet is a little bit different than the title of the Tonka. I would capitalize the main words. So you've capitalized temporary and, and love. I would do the same for the wet darkness. My person, I would capitalize the main words. Okay, but it looks good. The contrast looks pretty good. Notice that the contrast, some of the contrast here kind of gets lost as well. So just double check that if there's a way to maybe choose. This is the hard thing to do when you have a backdrop like this where part of it's like a lighter color, then another part of it's darker color. It, it's, it's harder to find good contrast. Right, because usually the, the text needs to be the same if, if it's on a separate page. Now, if you divide up and, and use different pages, then you're, you're, this will be less of an issue. So, again, I would suggest each product on a separate page. Okay, very good, Eileen. All right, Chris. Okay, got a picture there. Good, a good intro here about yourself and your educational philosophy. It's easy to read. If there's a way to single space this contact information, I would try to do that. I feel like you have a little bit too much space also before and after your greeting. I would try to maintain more of uh, this double spacing that you have between the paragraphs. I think this is a good spacing. And I would have the same space that you have here between your paragraphs. I would also have between the last paragraph and your closing. So I would have less space here. If you want to have more space between sincerely and your name, fine, or you can just leave it the way it is. But if you can single space your contact information, just like the contact information of the recipient of the letter, I would try to do that. So again, anywhere from here to here, I would try to single space the 
I would, again, I would have try to have a separate page for each of your if your products right that you included here. So maybe a separate page for e -for your formal email and a, a separate page for your recommendation letter. Also include your purpose statement, include all of the products that we completed for uh, for unit two. Try to keep equal spacing. So maybe have a few more words in the second line of your title so that you have more or less equal spacing across the page. I would uh, put in bold references and I, I would try to remove, if you can, some of the space between your last paragraph and your references title. Now I noticed that some of you guys are using the hanging indentation like Chris has done here. I personally like this better. If you can do it, if you can manage the hanging indentation, uh, it looks better. If not, that's fine. But again, if there's uh, if you if there's an easy way to do that, uh, try to have the hanging indentation so that you've got a half inch indentation after the first line of each of your references. Again, I would suggest trying to uh, keep a separate page for each of your poems and try. Uh, I like the backdrops. Um, I mean, if you want to use the backdrop instead of a separate image off to the side, that's fine. But make sure that you have good contrast. Notice that this is a better contrast in your limerick than the tanka. Notice how the image, the background image that you chose, some of the text is a little bit harder to read. Um, even this, this is fine, but even if you had a blacker, maybe a, even a bold text to make these, make the, the text kind of pop a little bit to bring it out just a little bit more might be a, a good option here just to bring this out a little bit darker, although it's not bad, you can read it, but you really want the text, even here there's moments that some of these texts are, are hard to read like darkness kind of gets lost a little bit. So yeah, think about that uh, here in your poetry section there. Everything else looks good though, Chris. Um, I like what you have here. All right, anybody else want me Thank to you. look? Anybody else want me to look at your e-portfolio or another aspect of your portfolio? Teacher. Yes. I have a doubt about, about the images. Uh, I'm using uh, Google Sites to create my, my e-portfolio. I change it to Google Sites. And here, the, the site give me, gives me the option to upload images that are like just an IE. So, in this case, I don't need to put the the pie de, the like the it's not plagio, right? I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite get. I understand you're looking for an image to include in your Google Sites. Yeah. And your question is if you can. I'm sorry. Can you can you rephrase the question again? Yes, teacher. My question is. If I can use these images without uh, putting the like the site of, of ah. or who took the picture. Okay, are those the images that came with the, the site, the, the template? Yes, teacher. All right, my my personal opinion on this is that you try to find because usually those images are, are stock images and using the images that come with it are probably going to be overused and they may or may not, you know, I, I would suggest that you find images that are a little bit more specific and make it personal to your particular message, your website that you're, that you're designing. And okay. so I would suggest that you try to use a Creative Commons search 
think we talked about yes. Creative Commons search. This is the old site here, but you can, you can okay. type in, you know, your topic and go to Google Images. And these are all images here that you could use, right, for, for publishing on your website. It just makes it a little bit more personal, more original, right? It makes it more original, your, your online space. Um, yes. And yeah, so that's, I would suggest that you find images uh, really specific to your, your wants and needs. Okay, teacher. And for example, if I use the, this, this site, the Creative Commons site, I don't need to put the, el nombre de, de quien tomó la foto abajo de la foto? Just the link. Just the link. So I select the link uh, that is, yeah, the, so, that says www.google.com y, y ya. Uh, okay, so for example, here, this is a, this is an image. And let's say I want to use this image, then I would, Copy this. This is in Flickr. I would just copy this and then include okay. that just below the image uh, in your in your website. Okay, teacher. Now uh, it's clear. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, make sure too, Demaris, um, that you're using the new Google Sites. It should look something like this, not not the old Google Sites. Teacher, can I share my screen so you can tell me if it is the new site? Sure. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to share it. Okay, is... Uh, you can see it, teacher? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. This is the new Google Sites. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, teacher. Yep. You're welcome. Um, teacher. Yes. Uh, Lizette asked me to tell you that she hasn't been able to be on the to be in these meetings because she doesn't have internet at her home since the day before yesterday. And uh, she asked me if I could ask you <laughs> that, what about the correction of the first uh, essay? Because she wanted to correct it, but she can't ask you because she can't access to the platform some because of some reason. And yeah, that, that's what I wanted to tell you. Okay, so uh, today, guys, this is going to be our last, last live session for our normal classes uh, for the semester. Um, I want to give anyone who wants to resubmit your first essay uh, needs to do the following. The first is you need to have completed your the third essay the or third essay the third unit essay the the argumentative essay so you need to have completed the argumentative essay in order to be considered to resubmit the first unit one essay and the second is uh you need to agree to meet online next week starting on monday monday through thursday meeting online from eight o'clock to nine o'clock to discuss and 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 be in touch with me uh, through the process of finishing your first essay, your persuasive essay. Okay, so um, I'm, we're going to meet beginning on Monday at 8 o'clock only for those who want to resubmit the first essay. So if you could forward that information to uh, Lisette and, and anyone else who wants to be reconsidered and resubmit for a, a change in grade for the first essay, we're going to work next week. But one of the requirements for resubmitting is that we're working together next week through these live sessions so that I'm giving you feedback throughout the week before you submit next Friday. 
So the deadline for resubmitting your first essay, the persuasive essay, is going to be Friday, June 26th, one week from today. Okay, June 26th, you'll have all day uh, to submit to finalize the document, but we're going to have live sessions next week again so that we are working together in developing your, your final draft for resubmitting this uh, this essay. Okay, so Omar, if you wouldn't mind, please do forward that information to Lisette, and you guys can forward it to anybody else who maybe is not here today, who wants to be reconsidered. Uh, those are the conditions that you need to have submitted the the uh, arg the argumentative essay, right, to be reconsidered to resubmitting the first persuasive essay, and you need to agree to the online sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher, thank you. I will tell you. All right, thank you. Anybody else want me to look at uh, your e-portfolios? We've got a few minutes here. Where I can also look at your educational philosophy if you have questions about that as well. Teacher, I have a question for today's segment. Uh, do we have to upload our links about e the e-portfolio in Aula Virtual and the Educational Philosophy as well? Uh, no, you don't. You don't have to include anything or submit anything to the assignments in the virtual classroom. I'm going to take the links from the e-portfolios in the Excel spreadsheet and um, and and then I'll look at the educational philosophy as it appears in your e-portfolio. So there's nothing to upload in the virtual classroom in the assignments. All right, teacher, thank you. So guys, just to uh, recap this week, today is going to be the last day to complete your educational philosophy and your e-portfolio. So I'm going to be finalizing your grades this weekend, and I'll be sending you a notification via chat in Microsoft Teams of your final grades for, for this class. Um, I'll probably be uploading grades later next week to uh, to the system, and, but you'll know your grades uh, this weekend as we're, we're uh, finishing up these last assignments. And um, we'll have next week, if, you have, if anybody has questions about your grades or needs to clarify anything about your grades, uh, please contact me Monday or Tuesday uh, to, to address any of uh, your doubts or questions, okay? Um, I think we'll go ahead and conclude there for, to, for, uh, for our final class. And uh, I want to tell everyone it was, it was a, a nice working with all of you guys, a pleasure having you in class. I know this was a strange semester for all of us, having kind of to shift from face-to-face -face classes to on online classes. But <clears throat> I think you guys really stepped up, and uh, I hope that that your work, that your hard work, and the changes that you made to your text throughout the semester, I hope you're leaving this class with, with uh, a, a level of satisfaction for what you accomplished. Uh, writing skill is very difficult, right? And going through that process of making changes and, and making those edits um, sometimes is a challenge. Um, but Try to keep that in mind later when you're uploading and you're creating other academic text, especially that you're you're really reaching out to your instructors to get feedback uh, to improve your work so that when you submit that final draft, you have a better expectation about what what the instructor is looking for. Right. And the only way that you're going to know that is to receive uh, some feedback throughout the writing process. 
And so make sure that you seek that. I mean, I, I know te teachers are building that into their instruction, but it takes sometimes it takes uh, some initiative on your part to reach out and ask those questions to really clarify and to 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 improve your writing craft. OK, but um, I think we'll stop there, guys. It was a pleasure again. I wish you guys safe and I uh, and uh, well, your families as well as we're going through this weird time. And hopefully we'll be back in the uh, face to face classroom very soon so that we can uh, continue on giving you guys classes that are, I think, uh, better having them having you guys face to face. Right. It's just a better experience uh, overall. So we'll stop there, guys. And uh, we'll be in touch. If you guys have any questions about your grades, make sure that you're reaching out to me early next week so that we can clarify uh, those those doubts. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Thanks, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, teacher. Thank you for everything during this semester. Have a good day. Teacher. Yes. I'm sorry, I have another question. Sure. I have to upload the the link of my of my my e portfolio in in Aula Virtual. No. No, you don't have to upload anything in Aula Virtual. You need just to make sure that you include the link in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher, and thank you for everything. As Caito said, this semester, I think that we all saw the, the effort that you put in your classes and all the effort that you do when you help us. And thank you very much. We're going to, to miss you, teacher. <laughs> well, I'm going to miss you too, guys. You've been uh, great. I uh, really enjoyed having all of you in, in class. So. I wish you guys uh, continued success and of course we'll be in touch and hopefully we'll have opportunities to have class in the future. So thanks guys. Take Thank care. You, Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, bye teacher. Stay safe. Bye, teacher. Have a good day. It was a pleasure to have a, such a nice teacher like you for this semester. And I'm really glad I could have I had this opportunity to be in this university for this semester and i hope to see you soon and thank you see you later have a good day thanks omar thank you and enjoyed having you uh, in class bye teacher thank you bye -bye. for everything care, guys